Good afternoon. My name is Terry Everhart. I am the executive director of the Denise Graves Foundation. I'm going to say again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Happy Juneteenth. Yeah. Happy, happy Juneteenth. So I was getting ready to do this concert today, and I was thinking about what I was going to wear. Because I know ladies typically are the people that think about what they're going to wear. <laughs> but I was thinking about what I was going to wear, and I was thinking, OK, do I wear a shirt, a collar, a collar open? And I was like, no, I need to wear a tie. It's Juneteenth. My son is here. He's wearing shorts. <laughs> but I got out of the shower and I said, Juneteenth is a day of celebration. It's a day of happiness. It requires a bow tie. It requires us to really uplift this idea that anything is possible for a people that were oppressed, that have turned that around and that are moving in a different direction, a forward direction. So I'm excited to be here with you today, and I'm super excited that uh, the foundation could partner with our friends at the African American Center, of, uh, Howard County Center of African American Culture, which is super excited to partner again with Kelly Ross and Dr. Cunningham and the whole Center for African American Culture. That mission is so powerful, and we feel like our mission aligns so greatly with theirs. For 35 years in the classical vocal arts space, for 35 plus years, there have been um, many names in the operatic space. But one comes to mind when you think about mezzo-sopranos, and that name is Denise Graves. Denise Graves is a um, DC native, grew up here, went to the Duke Ellington School for the Arts, and has had over 35 years of successful performance careers at the Metropolitan on all around the world, performing works like Carmen and Delilah from Samson and Delilah. And she is a staple in this industry for what excellence looks like, and even more than that, for what black excellence looks like. So one day she called me and said, I'm doing this foundation thing, you want to be a part of it? And duh, Denise Graves called me. So yes, of course I wanted to do that. So I'm ecstatic to be championing that mission with her and just really lifting up the idea that excellence, dedication, and commitment equals betterment. And we are going around spreading that message in HBCUs and conservatories alike through our Shared Voices program. But the bigger thing, and this is what leads us to Juneteenth, is that once upon a time, people were tricked into not knowing that they were free. In the classical vocal art space, there have been many tricks that have left out the telling of the story in a way that really includes all people, and that's our mission. Our mission is to make sure that people know that there are people like Mary Caldwell Dawson, who was the first impresario, who created the National Negro Opera House in Pittsburgh back in the 1900s, the early 1900s. There are people that have been doing opera that look like me for a long time. One of them lives right in our neighborhood, Ms. Leontine Price, you know that name? That's a name that we all know and love. That is a person of color. That is a, an example of this black excellence that we are continuing, continuously trying to champion. So Juneteenth is a day of profound significance, celebrating the resilience and enduring spirit of African Americans. On this day in 1865, a long-awaited freedom was announced. Two hundreds, two hundreds of thousands of enslaved African Americans two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. Today, we commemorate the invaluable contributions African Americans have made to our nation and the classical arts, embodying our belief that educating is activism. This day inspires us to embrace unity, foster hope, and build a future where freedom and equality are realities for all. The young singers that you're going to see today they're graduates from conservatories, they're graduates from HBCUs, and they are people that are doing this at the highest level, and they are emerging artists, so I'm hopeful that you are going to welcome them with grace and kindness and joy, and that you're going to applaud, applaud wildly every time they sing. And I will just let you know about the program that we have cut the Wagner piece, the Troyema, by uh, Richard Wagner, that will not happen in, in the first set of songs. But without further ado, I'd like Ms. Kelly Ross to bring a few words from the, the African American Museum. Thank you. Good 
afternoon, everyone. I am happy to see your faces. It is a joy to be able to celebrate Juneteenth. When we think about what is freedom, whew, can you just imagine what it was like back in 1865 to be a slave? Just take a, take a second, just to, can you feel that, being enslaved? And then to hear, hey, I'm no longer a slave. I can do what I want. I can go where I want. But when we think of Juneteenth, it should resonate in your heart. And on the behalf of the Howard County Center of African American Culture, I want to recognize two of our board members are here, Ms. DeLay Spurge. By the way, she's, she's very uh, subtle, but it was her mom who started the museum. Also, I'd like to recognize Ms. Farida, and I won't mess up your last name. So if you could say it, but if you... She's I'm a little too wild for help. Oh. And if you hear the noise, up there, they're putting a new roof on. <laughs> and is Ms. Mabel here? Okay, she's another board member. But anyway, I am standing in for Dr. Evelyn Cunningham, who is the chairperson of our museum. And the museum itself has been going on for more than 30 years. And this Juneteenth celebration means a lot to the museum and hopefully to each one of you. So we have a nice program planned for you. So sit back, relax, we're gonna feed you afterwards and enjoy this Juneteenth celebration. I also wanna recognize Reverend West, who has been so gracious. <laughs> to let us come here to the church. And my group of youth engagement program students, which you will meet later, uh, they're here as well. So as I said, sit back and enjoy this 1865 Juneteenth celebration. Not 
And um, both of these songs are love songs, two completely different kinds of love. The first song is Ideale, which means ideal, which talks about a beautiful kind of love, an ideal kind of love. And um, the second song is Non Tamo Piu, which means I don't love you anymore, which talks about the not so beautiful kind of love. Um, so I hope that you will enjoy these pieces. Oh, <laughs> 
and stray. The white dove promised two pieces coming up, it's just one. So the first piece um, is Nachtu Treuba. Uh, now we're into German land. This piece is by a composer named Franz Schubert. And um, Nachtu Treuba in English means night and dreams. And this is just another beautiful song that is just paying homage to the sky and the beauty of the night time and the time when we do dream. <laughs> Denise Graves is very well known 
for her portrayal of Carmen, and is known as one of the greatest Carmens of all time. Uh, a very fun fact, uh, Denise and I go way back. When I was 16 years old and I was very interested in singing opera, I had seen Denise Graves on Sesame Street singing Carmen to Elmo, and I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. But I wasn't too sure of it, so I emailed her. Didn't think she would reply, but she did. And I asked her, you know, should I pursue opera? Should I, should I do this thing, this new genre of music that I can sing? And she told me that sometimes opera chooses you and to follow my heart. So many years later, Denise and I have worked on several occasions, from master classes to world premieres, and even in her directorial debut of Carmen. So I'm very, very grateful to be singing this next selection, which is the Habanera from Carmen. Oh, 
Thank you. 
Okay, cool. Hey, everybody. I'm going to get a little, more, little bit relaxed. Is that all right? Oh, man. That don't sound all right to them. <laughs> they sound sleepy. Y'all sleepy? <laughs> all right, we're going to do a little bit of musical theater. Is that all right with y'all today? Thank you. 
I will not be saying this again. <laughs> um, we are now going into the last portion of um, this concert, which are going to be spirituals. So I will be singing lots of shine. <clears throat> and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory in the year of Jubilee. We are climbing Jacob's ladder Oh, <laughs> 
tell when you have a church audience. Because <laughs> we said, amen. amen. God is good. Uh, all right, all right. Dr. Adam and Cutler, come in. Good-looking, drinking audience. Look great. Thank you so much for coming. Um, sorry I wasn't able to be here at the beginning, but it looks like everything was in good hands. Um, I want, before I forget, I have a couple of tests to do. If you have one of these, uh, please complete it and give it to us before you leave. If you, did you enjoy this today? Yeah. And there was no admission fee. You noticed that. Didn't have to pay. If you like this and you want us to continue giving you these kinds of programs, fill out this sheet and tell our sponsors and our benefactors how good it was and how much you like it. I think there's even a question on there like, would you come to one of these again? So please do that and give it to us before you leave. Uh, I also want to give a special thanks to Terry Eberhardt. Foundation. And he'll be available a little later to tell you a little bit more about the foundation. It's a very, very impressive organization. And you can tell by the quality of entertainment that they brought us what caliber of organization this is. They brought Broadway to Columbia today, right? Um, I, I did not put in the program our young. Boy Scout Troop 2016. They have been our partners for the better part of 10 or 11 years in doing um, this program, Juneteenth, and in doing Kwanzaa. Show you how long it's been when they started. Some of them were like Cub Scouts, and they are now Eagle Scouts, many of them. And they have been very, very good. Uh, I think they're probably over the fellowship hall right now, but you'll see them in their uniform, so just know that they're some of our most faithful partners. Um, we've got our board members, not all of them, but they're here today. I need to recognize the lace for, has he been? We've done that already. Okay. Okay, so I guess the main thing I have to do now is introduce you or, or invite you and ask you to please when you leave here, go over to the fellowship hall. We have a reception and a little, a brief program for you and some delicious refreshments. The program is um, being put on, it's, it's performers, our kids, who have uh, participated in our youth empowerment program. It was a grant program uh, by the, uh, the Office of the County Executive. It's not going to be long, so, but they've worked very hard to put this together. 
and no celebration of an African American community is complete without a little bit of food, right? So we have some delicious refreshments for you, and the caterer does not want to take them home with her. So please, when you leave here, exit right and go to the fellowship hall. Uh, then, lastly, we have some remarks. Delegate Jessica Feldmark has asked if she can come and give a, a few remarks, after which we will have our final performance of the day, and we'll go to the fellowship hall. Well, thank you, Dr. Cunningham, and uh, I'm Jessica Feldmark. It is my honor and privilege to chair the Howard County House delegation to the General Assembly. And um, I just want to thank you all for this tremendous program. Thank you to our amazing artists. Thank you. This has been uh, such a moving and powerful afternoon. Um, and I do have some citations on behalf of the Maryland General Assembly. So, from the Maryland General Assembly, an official citation. Be it hereby known to all that sincerest congratulations are offered to the Denise Graves Foundation in recognition of their 2024 Juneteenth concert and their unwavering commitment to promoting equity and inclusion in classical vocal arts. Presented on this 19th day of June 2024 on behalf of the Howard County Delegation. long-standing tradition in this community in Howard County. You have brought Juneteenth celebrations and commemorations to our county long before it had federal or state recognition, and um, we really appreciate that and seeing how, how things have um, grown and blossomed into this wonderful concert today. So, an official citation. Be it hereby known to all that sincerest congratulations are offered to Howard County Center of African American Culture, in recognition of their 2024 Juneteenth concert and their unwavering commitment to preserving and celebrating African American history and culture in the Howard County community, presented on this 19th day of June, 2024, on behalf of the Howard County delegation. <laughs> Thank you. 
guys. Hey guys. Today, I want to tell y'all about Juneteenth. Y'all might be wondering, what is Juneteenth? Well, it's a super important day in American history. Juneteenth, June 19th, 1865, was the day the last enslaved people of the United States found out that they were free. Even though, though President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, it took over two years for the people to find out that they were free. In Texas, many people did not know that they were free until the Union soldiers came and told them that they were free. Now, imagine waiting two years after you were set free, knowing that you were free. Juneteenth celebrates, Juneteenth, on Juneteenth, we celebrate freedom and remember the struggles of those who came before us. It's a time to honor your, our ancestors and recognize their strength and bravery. On this day, we're supposed to have parades, cookouts, and lots of fun activities to celebrate this day. Juneteenth is also a reminder that we're supposed to keep the freedom and equality to work on It's about making sure everyone is treated fairly no matter where they come from or what they look like. So today, let's celebrate how far we've come and think about how we can make the world a better place for everyone. Happy Juneteenth. <laughs> It's a word I heard whispered in my head, a dream we dare not to speak out loud. But today, I stand here for a moment. Just saying that makes my heart race. See, I see the darkest of days. I see the worst of what a man can do to a man. My mama prayed for this day. Though she ain't here to see it, her spirit is right here with me. And I ain't gonna lie, it's a mighty strange feeling for you. But what to do with freedom? We got no land, no money, just our hands and our will. But we got each other. That's something. I reckon it's going to be a long road. But every step we take is a step that say we couldn't. So we got to build. We got to learn. We have to make a life that's worth living. So now I say, here's the future. To the fight. To the freedom. Our freedom. Hello, I'm John Davis, and I'm a Union soldier for the Civil War. I fought for the Civil War because I believed in a boss of slavery and freedom. This war was brutal. I saw a thing no person should ever have to see. June 19, 1865 is the day I will never forget. It's the day when General Gordon Ranger arrived to Galveston, Texas, and a and and announced that slaves were legally free. Two years before that, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation of Proclamation, announcing that all slaves were free. I mean, can you imagine I, them slaves leaving, them slaves living in bondage, unaware that they were legally free? The joy and the tears and the shouts of freedom is nothing like I've ever seen before. For them, it was the end of centuries and oppression. As a soldier, I felt the immense pride knowing that my sacrifices helped make this a living for uh, make this a living for everyone today. Juneteenth, Juneteenth is uh, as a member of freedom and promise, knowing that I helped. I helped out and I fought for what was right and make it make it so we can make a living today for all black people. It's something I'll carry on with, with me forever. So as we celebrate Juneteenth, let's remember what it truly stands for. Not just a piece of history, a call to action. Let's remember what let's remember what we continue striving 
for a place where everyone is free and equal. As a Union soldier, I'm proud to play a, far, a part in that fight. And I hope all of you continue to carry that spirit on forward. Freedom is a fight worth, it's a right worth fighting for. And together, we can make it a living for everyone. Thank you. I'm so sick and tired of being sick and tired. For too long we've been told to wait. Wait for justice. Wait for equality. Wait for our rights. But how much longer can we wait when our children are hungry, when our voices are silenced, when our dignity is trampled? We live in a nation that preaches freedom and justice for all, but where is that justice when we can't even vote? Where is that freedom when we've been beaten and terrorized for daring to stand up for ourselves? I come from Mississippi, the heart of darkness in America, where fear and hate rule the day. But I stand here to tell you that we are not afraid. We will not be moved because our struggle is not just for us, but for every soul so yearning to breathe free. I remember the pain of being denied the right to vote. The sting of the last of cold nights in jail. But I also remember the strength in our unity, the power in our voices when raised together. We've come too far to turn back now. So we will march. We will protest. We will raise our voices until this nation lives up to its creed. We are not asking for charity. We are demanding our rights and we will not stop until every child, black or white, can grow up in a land where freedom truly reigns. So I say to you, keep the faith. Keep fighting because together we are unstoppable. Together we will make a change. Together we will overcome. Yes. <laughs> 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 My home in Ohio was a safe place for escaping slavery. I used a wrong turn to signal when it was a safe place for them to cross the river to freedom. My family and I helped in many people find a new life. We believed in helping our neighbors no matter what. Let's always help those in need. Levi Coffin. They called me the president of the Underground Railroad because my wife and I helped over 3,000 slaves escape to freedom. Our house was a safe place where people could hide and rest from those who wanted to capture them. We believe in kindness and justice for all. Let's always stand up for what's right. Hello, I'm William Still. I helped many slaves escape to freedom through the Underground Railroad. I kept detailed records of the people 
I hope so families could find each other later. I believe everyone deserves to be free. And I worked hard to make sure people have a, a, a chance at a better life. Helping others is always the right thing to do. Hi, I'm Harriet Tutman. I was born a slave but escaped and became a conductor on the Underground Railroad. I helped over 300 slaves escape and led them to freedom. I'm called Moses because I was never caught and never lost a passenger. Remember, with courage and determination, we can overcome anything. Do you hear it? The echo of the chains breaking, the roar of freedom spreading like wildfire. Do you hear it? Hello, everyone. My name is Opal Lee, the grandmother of Juneteenth. You see, Juneteenth is a significant day in American history. It marks June 19, 1865, the day the last enslaved African Americans were told they were free. Can you believe it? More than two years later, President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. Juneteenth is a day of freedom, reflection, and celebration. But for many years, it wasn't noticed as a national holiday. Growing up in Texas, I always, said, I always knew the importance of Juneteenth. It was very important. I always celebrated it with my family and community, and we it celebrated with joy and remembrance. But when I looked outside my community, I learned that barely anybody knew it existed. This troubled me a lot. So I decided at the age of 89 to start doing something about it. At the age of 89, I decided that I was going to make this, start my journey of making Juneteenth a national holiday. I walked from Fort Worth, Texas to Washington, D.C., a journey over 1,400 miles. I wanted to symbolize the long and endurance journey to freedom that our ancestors had to endure. Along the way, I spoke to countless people and shared the significance of Juneteenth and gathered support. It wasn't easy and there were many challenges, but I believed deeply in this cause. I knew that if we all can come together and recognize Juneteenth, we can all take a significant step towards healing and unity in this country. In 2021, my dreams finally came true. President Joe Biden signed a bill announcing that Juneteenth is now a national holiday. It was one of the proudest moments of my life. But it isn't just about a day off of work, or not having school. It's about acknowledging and knowing that what I fought for and what I had to do helped make this moment possible.